Hey, what is up all you do yourselfers? My name is Dylan Taylor. This is Dylan's DIY workshop. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to wood burn letters with a stencil. So you just wanna use your stencil to draw out the letters, just trace them out because we don't need to fill them in. We have the outline, we're gonna do that with a wood burner later. If you want, you could cut these out so that they're long strips and you can clamp a piece of wood or something like a ruler, like a ruler down here. So say you're using this bottom line, you would have all the letters line up in a straight line. So if you had the same gap between the bottom of the letters and the actual letters themselves, you could have something clamped down here. But since I still have it all in a full sheet, I'm just kind of doing this by eye. So I'm just kind of lining the other letters up with the letters that are in this line, then tracing it out. So it's not exactly perfect, uh, but I just haven't had the chance to cut this out yet. And I'm gonna do that with a paper cutter, something where it'll cut a square line across. So I'll cut this stencil up later. So far we've got wood burn, and I think you guys can see that on this camera. I'm not entirely sure. Let's get it a little bit closer. There you go, you can kind of see it. You don't really need to push down too hard either because you wanna be able to burn it over the letters. Okay, so there you go. You've got your letters. Let's see, we can see it on this camera a lot better. You've got that traced out, and once you've got that traced out, you're good to wood burn. Now, another option here is to take your stencil and use something similar to this. This is a scorch marker. I will leave an Amazon link to that. And I have a video you could click up here if you wanna see how to use that first time I used it. Here is a, just a quick test that I did. So all I did here was write with this marker. It's like a paint marker, but when you draw on the wood, it shows up clear but wet. And you take a heat gun and you just run the heat gun over it and then the wood burns. It's actually a really cool concept. Not many people that I know actually have the scorch marker. So I'm gonna show you how to use this razor tip wood burner that I have right here. And I'm just going to use the regular skew chisel that's messed up. I don't know how that got all bent out of shape. I'm gonna bend that back. Oh, it's, it's kind of crooked there, that should be flat. I'm just gonna turn it on, let it heat up a little bit. I need to bend it back. And I'm gonna use these pliers right here just to flatten it back out. So these are duckbill pliers. They don't have any teeth on them and they have a nice flat face here. So now that this is heating up red hot, which is something you don't usually want it to do because it becomes weaker that way, I'm just flattening it out with these duckbill pliers, kind of getting the shape back to it, not, not putting too much pressure on it. So if that ever happens, that's one way to fix it. Another way is to just kind of find a scrap piece of wood, kind of push down and drag away because it does tend to warp as you use it. If you use it on a high heat, pressing you know, too hard using one side of the chisel, it'll tend to bend that way. So all I'm doing here is just kind of making it straight again. And we don't want to run it on a heat like that. I usually run mine around six or seven if I'm using cherry or maple, and a little bit higher if I'm working really quickly. We're gonna start off here uh, just on the W. Notice that it'll follow the line quite well, but if you turn the heat up too high, it'll kind of skate across the wood and you won't have uh, as good of a control, I guess. Also, if you look if you look right here, the higher heat kind of bleeds off. You see how it's orange over here? That's not something that we want. If I turn it down to say five, wait for it to cool down just a little bit, and we would burn, it doesn't seem to bleed as much. You don't end up with that orange on the sides. So that's an option. If you want a really clean burn with no overburn, use a lower heat setting. If that's not a problem for you, a little bit higher heat setting so that you can move quicker is maybe a better option. Uh, for this, I'm just gonna probably pick around a five or a six and just move quickly so that that doesn't bleed like that. And I'm just using the edge of the skew. And then when I get up to the corners up here, that's where I'm using just the point so that I can go around those corners. A little bit lighter on the hand so that it actually goes around and doesn't dig in. So that's something that you'll get used to is how to actually make your lines. If it's a straight line, I use this chisel and it's hard to describe here on camera, but if you could see, this is the way I kind of hold it, not completely flat. I wanna lift this back portion up just a little bit because I don't want to 
control it with a point, I want to be dragging it and then I have more control over it. And the straighter the line, the flatter I will make the, the skew so that it, it's harder to divert from that path. It'll just kind of follow it nicer. So just practice making lines uh, when you can and following lines, drawing straight lines, curved lines, seeing which works best for you to follow. I'm also curious, what kind of wood burning videos would you guys like to see? Because I've wood burned quite a few things. I've wood burned faces, I've wood burned trees, I've wood burned all kinds of stuff. What, what is something that you guys would like to learn how to wood burn or any questions that you have about wood burning? because I will make a video so that you guys can watch that and learn something new maybe. So curious, just put that down in the comments down below. Maybe it's how to draw curved lines. There's a whole bunch of videos on my channel already, but you know, sometimes that's hard to find which ones and maybe the video quality just isn't as good as it could be. So let me know what kind of questions you guys want answered. Of course, these cameras, they just they run on a battery so fast. You can only record for like all oh, half an hour before the battery's dead and you gotta toss another one in there. Canon camera, there you go. Oh yeah, much better angle. You can you can see uh, this Roxy sweater that my girlfriend left here and I am wearing because I woke up and I was tired. So I put a sweater on. Let's continue wood burning. So once you get all of these letters uh, stenciled out, like stenciled out, once you get all of them outlined, with the wood burner. It's your choice whether to just leave it like this so that you have the outline. It's your choice whether you want to shade it in with this same skew by just going sideways lightly. Sometimes it's hard to get a uniform texture across it when you're just using the side of the skew. So I tend not to use that on things that need to be uniform. I just use it on things that quickly need a shade and maybe dark areas because it's really easy to get the very dark. For going across, it tends to jump a bit so you end up with lighter and darker areas. It takes a really light hand to be able to do this and a lot of practice. And even with that said, uh, I still can't do it. That so what I like to use other than that is this spoon-shaped shader is what I call it. I don't really know what it's called, but if we put that on, I tend to have that on a bit higher heat setting. I like to make little circles all the way around. You can go lighter or darker, just depending on how long you leave it there or what heat setting you're on. It's always easier to start lighter and then go darker. There you go, that's a very smooth burn right there. Compare the two, let me let this focus for a second. If you compare the two, this is very smooth, whereas this is, looks a little bit textured. Might be a little bit hard to tell from a distance, and if you're just looking for something to be wood burned and you only have a skew, go ahead and use that, because it, it really doesn't make too much of a difference. But if you, you're really picky, Go ahead and use that spoon shaped shader and that that goes for any kind of wood burner that the bits are interchangeable even the larger soldering iron style wood burners like this right here the blue one's the mastercraft version you can get this at canadian tire so you can use it just the same this one actually is a little bit nicer than this red one that i have this is the first wood burner i ever had this one you can't actually change the bit which kind of sucks so you're stuck with this uh you know skew shape shader you can't you also can't change the temperature on either of these which is kind of a bummer but they still burn quite nicely this blue one gets up to 930 degrees Fahrenheit whereas this razor tip unit that I have this one it gets up to 13 or 1400 degrees on setting 10 so that's something to keep in mind this is uh, almost $200 though if you're in Canada, it might be a little bit cheaper in the States. It is absolutely worth that. It's just whether or not you want to invest that into this craft. If you're just beginning, if you don't really know what you want to do, or say you only have one sign that you really want to do. I would go ahead and get the cheaper wood burner if I were you. Maybe do a couple signs, sell them to your friends, sell them to your family, and then you can go ahead and buy yourself one of the, the better units, or maybe ask for it for a Christmas gift. Uh, I ended up getting mine for Christmas from my dad after I was doing a bunch of wood burning. I don't even know if I asked for it. I think I may have. I'm so grateful for that as a gift a few years ago because it's allowed me to make a bunch of these videos and get much better at wood burning. It's, it's provided a lot of opportunities for me. It's, it's a tool that's definitely paid for itself over the, the course of owning it. That also being said, this tool is much, much easier to use and get good results out of 
than one of these soldering iron style wood burners just just because of where you hold if you look here this is like holding a pencil similar to actually holding a pencil like right there at the end and right with it so you have a lot more control in this it feels natural. This is just like using any writing utensil you've used your whole life. Whereas this wood burner, you can't hold on to it up here and draw like that because this part right here gets very, very hot. And you've got two heat shields here and then you have your handle, which is large. It's almost, I would say, an inch in diameter at the biggest point. And then you're still almost four inches away from the end of the wood burner. Where to rest your hand is a little bit different than if you're using this. If I'm using this, I rest my hand like I'm writing with a pencil. If I rest my hand with this, it's like, it's like I'm writing with a screwdriver. That's, that's how I could explain it. Is, is like I'm wood burning with a screw. It's much easier to get better results out of the more quality unit, the uh, razor tip. You could also use uh, coal wood, also makes a wood burner. I haven't specifically tested it out, but it's a unit similar to this, and it has the pen style wood burners. Now I think that's, that's more of what I'm getting at. I'm not saying razor tip's the best. It's the only one that I have experience with, but anything where you hold on to it right near the nib, which is the wood burning part, I think that's gonna do you a lot better than something where you're holding it a few inches away and a really wide handle. That's not to say that you can't get good results out of the cheaper units, but it's, it's a lot easier too with the nicer ones. So I've just made a mistake there. See that O, how it comes down too far? We don't want that. What you want is a, you know, a box cutter like this or just the replacement blades. That's all I use is just a blade. And the wood grain goes this direction. So I'm just gonna scrape that direction with the tip of the blade just ever so gently. You can figure out which way works better, forward or backward or both. And just kinda lightly scrape back and forth until that problem is gone. And then also kind of blend that in a little bit by scraping and making a dished out shape, a, di a dish dished out shape rather than just a, a line. And there you go, it is It's pretty well gone. I didn't do a perfect job. But that is how to wood burn letters with a stencil. It's pretty simple. It's just like tracing anything else that you would wood burn. You just go ahead and draw it on in pencil and then follow your lines with the wood burner. For shading it, if you want to shade it, then that's one way to do so. Another way to do so would be to use a scorch marker, if you have a scorch marker. See how it got wet there? It's, yeah, you can see that, it got wet. And so now that we've wood burned the edges, it'll make it so that this doesn't actually bleed through to the next piece of wood. So see, this is a lot quicker than when I was shading that other, the other letter there. Much, much quicker there. That's one of the things that I really like about this Scorch Pen is the fact that it is quick because if you're making a sign or if you're making something large and you need it done well, a little bit quicker or if you don't quite have the patience for wood burning the way it normally takes, this is just a, it's an awesome new way that you can wood burn. Heat gun's like a really, really hot hair dryer or different, you can have different shaped heat guns, one that looks like this, or you can have one like me that changes position. I, I just like holding on to this one like this. And run it on heat setting two. And then this is where the magic So there you go, it's quite the best thing ever and you gotta be really careful. You see how the wood actually burned right above the letter? That's from the heat gun itself. So, you know, if that happens, you can scrape it away. But that's just one thing that you gotta be really careful about with the scorch marker and the heat gun is to just gradually heat it up rather than heat it up too much in one spot because then you end up burning the wood. The prettiest looking thing all the time, but it is much quicker. So that, guys, is how to woodburn letters. But for right now, I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome, allowing me to keep creating videos the way that I do. And a special thank you to the top tier Patreon supporters, Randy, Robin Burt, and Mike Maxwell. You guys are extra special. If anyone else wants to help support my channel or get their name said at the end of every single one of my videos, then Patreon is an awesome place to go on over to. Go check that out up in the top right corner. Thank you for your consideration on that, and that is going to be the end of this video. Thank
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are new, please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, please share this video with a friend. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, give it a big old thumbs up. We'll see you guys all next time. Peace out.